Dolphin Mistral is an uncensored language model. It's free, offline, and totally private. You can run this on a home typical gaming video card. I'm using an RTX 3080. I've got a similar model that ran on a 1080 Ti. And if you have a good enough CPU but you don't have a GPU, you can still run this. Because some of these quantized or compressed 7B models, which are 7 billion parameters, are some of the smaller ones and need less computing power. Also, this one has a 32K context window, which means you can have a long conversation going with it compared to other models. This tutorial is going to be for Windows, but there's a Linux version of the exact same thing, and I already made a video about it, so check the link down in the description if you want to know how to do this in Linux. So first things first, we need to download Olama. You can go to olama.com and download. It will detect that you're running Windows. This is available for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So we're going to download the Windows preview version because the official one's not out yet. But I already tested this on a different computer. Runs pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to have to like shut down OBS Studio for a moment. Wasn't expecting that. And after I get it installed, I'll start it back up. So now if you take a look down here, you can see that the Olama logo is there. It's running in the background. The way that you communicate with it is through PowerShell. I'm going to show you how to install a much better interface through a web browser. It's a lot more clean way to chat with it than using the command line. Now we're going to download Open Web UI. The prerequisite to this is you have to download Docker. Docker is a container program, and this will run within that container. You go to docker.com. Under Products, you go to Docker Desktop, and then we download for Windows. Docker can take a little bit of time to install, so be patient with it. I don't add a desktop shortcut, but I do this WSL2 instead of Hyper-B. Not really sure what that means, but it says recommended, and this has worked for me already, so that's what I do. Now it's installed, I have to restart Windows, accept this subscription service agreement. I mean, you don't really sign up for anything or pay for anything, it's free, but you have to click accept to make this work. I usually just use recommended settings. Then I continue without signing in and skip survey. This again can take a while. I mean, I have a decent computer, but Docker seems to still take you know a little bit of time to start up, so be patient with this. Hmm, then I might not be able to run it if it requires hypervisor. Well, that was unexpected, but I'm glad it happened. I went into my BIOS and I enabled virtualization. You're gonna to have to do that too if you wanna do this. The settings for that will depend on your computer system and the motherboard that you have, so you might have to look it up. So let's get back to it. Let's get Docker open. And also it looks like Olama is not running, so I'll have to start it up too. There it is. And if you want to keep it running all the time, you can make an entry and start up. If I hit the X and close Docker, it will still be running. You can see it there. So the next thing is to get back to the GitHub page for the web UI. All right, we're gonna scroll down to the part where it says if Olama is on your computer, we're going to copy that command and we're going to open PowerShell and paste that command into PowerShell and hit enter. I wasn't thinking about that virtualization issue because on my other computer where I tested this, I run virtual machines, so it was already enabled to begin with, so it just didn't even really occur to me. Now it's prompting for firewall access, so click allow. So you can see here that we run it on localhost port 3000. The sign in does not go to them. So when you put your email address and save a password, that only goes internally into your system. So we'll have to click sign up, put our name in. The next thing we'll have to do is click on settings over here and go to models, where it says pull a model from olama.com. We're gonna type in Dolphin dash Mistral and hit the download button right next to it. And it'll show you the progress downloading it over here. And while we're waiting for this, just so you know, you can go to olama.com, you can click models, and any of these models that you see a name for, you can download under that same download field in the settings for the web UI. All right, looks like it's done. Let's go to it. Now that we're in, I like to change the temperature by going to Settings, General, scroll down to Advanced Parameters, and then Show. And for the sake of accuracy, I like to take this temperature down. If it's at 0.8, you can bring it down, I don't know, 0.45 or something around there. And hit Save. Temperature is good higher if you want to be creative. 
it's good lower if you're looking for fact-based things just in general but different language models react differently to temperature settings so after setting the temperature the next thing you have to do is select the model so we pull down here you'd be able to see all the models that are installed right now i have mistral and dolphin mistral we're loading up dolphin mistral for this one and the first thing we're going to do is hit it with a math riddle because that's where i like to begin with to see its reasoning ability and its mathematical problem solving that's how I like to test some language models to start off with. So if a zookeeper had 100 pairs of animals in her zoo and two pairs of babies are born for each one of the original animals, then sadly 23 animals don't survive. How many animals do you have left in total? The answer I got from the website I pulled this from is 977. So let's see if it gets that right. See, here's where I got it wrong. It thinks it's two babies per pair but it was more specifically two pairs of babies. So in that reasoning and that logic, it got it wrong. So that was a fail. So now let's test it to see if it's centered. Let's ask, how do I bypass security cameras? And it went right into telling me and gave me all kinds of instructions for it. So we know this model is not censored. Well, that does it. This is always fun. I enjoy doing these. I mean, I was just playing around with AI for the heck of it for like a year and learning this stuff. And I thought, what should I do with it? I don't do this for a job or anything. So I figured I'd make YouTube videos. So if you benefited from this and you think you got some value, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button. And if you subscribe, I'm going to be showing you all different ways to run open source language models, mostly in Linux, but we'll cover some Windows stuff too. If you're a Linux user, you'll probably want to especially subscribe. And if you're not a Linux user and you're curious about it and you subscribe, then you'll learn some new things. I appreciate you taking the time for me, and I'll see you in the next one.